Hi everyone, welcome to the Mission Viejo Sports Zone inside the MVTV studios. I'm Gordon Spencer. Highlights ahead of the number one baseball team in Orange County and the number one softball team in the country. First to baseball in the San Clemente Tritons, once number two in the country, but dropped their league opener to Mission Viejo, but since have been on a roll. San Clemente and Tribuco Hills in the Seaview League. San Clemente 3 and 1, Tribuco Hills 2 and 2, both chasing Mission Viejo at 4 and 0. Oh. Dave Glatley and Michael Burns exchanging lineup cards. Bottom of the first, no score, runner on second, one out. Eric Voler singles in Christian Perez, and it's 1 to nothing, Tribuco Hills. Chad Crosby at the plate, he singles to left. Here comes Voler, stumbling around third, the throw to the plate to Lucas Herbert. He puts on the tag, and Bowler is out. Big run there, bottom of the third now. Andre Pallante serves up a hit to Cooper Uhl. Uhl hits one down into the corner. That one's gonna roll for a while, so Uhl's not gonna stop. Around second, heading to third, slides in with a lead off triple. Then it's Eric Bowler again. This time, he does the job. He hits it to the left side. Fielder's choice goes to first, the RBI. Pool scores, two to nothing, Tribuco Hills. Top of the fourth. Jack Cornish on the mound for Tribuco Hills. Nick Gernard showing the defense, flashing the glove, lays out, making a great catch to keep it two to nothing, Tribuco Hills. Then the bees show up, everybody hits it, hit the deck. Until the all clear is given and no one was hurt. Top of the fifth, San Clemente's Liam Eldridge on second. He's leaning, Tribuco Hills has him. Throw gets away, Eldridge is safe at third. And then Tyler Ankrum lifts a pop up to left and that's deep enough to score Eldridge. And San Clemente gets on the board for the very first time late in this game. They're down now two to one. Then Dylan Riddle comes up with a big hit for San Clemente with two on, two out. He singles to right. Two runs will come in to score for San Clemente, and they take their first lead of the game, three to two. New pitcher Trevor Muse in for Jabuco Hill, still in the fifth, and he hits one deep, and that scores Riddle as he tags and heads for home. And the San Clemente Tritons lead it four to two. The guy that had the big hit now on the mound to finish it off. He gets the strikeout to end the game. The throw down to first. Runner out, San Clemente wins it four to two after being down two to nothing. San Clemente improving to four and one. Tribuco Hills dropping to two and three. Riddle, two for four and the two RBIs. How about some non-league baseball? Mission Viejo and Capo Valley. Bob Zamora, 38 years as the coach there on the left. Chris Ashback of Mission Viejo played for Bob Zamora. Top of the third, one nothing Mission Viejo after a walk and a sacrifice bunt. Ryan Hinojosa with the RBI double. Jared Joel scores to tie it at one. Top of the fifth, Capo takes the lead after a leadoff single by Kevin Wong. He's punted to second and is at third with a pass ball. Jared Joel deep enough for the sack fly RBI. Capo takes a two to one lead. Bottom of the sixth, two on, two out for Mission Viejo's Tyler Oderkirk. He comes up with a big RBI single. Thomas Byrne coming around. He scores to tie it at two. Bottom of the seventh, the drama. Bases loaded, one out for Mission Viejo and Thomas Byrne. The big walk-off hit. Michael Solorio comes in to score, and the Mission Viejo Diablos pull off the comeback, winning 3-2 to win the city battle. These guys grow up playing Little League together and having fun, and so uh, not being in the same league is, is different for us, but uh, it's fun when we have our bye week at the same time to get together and play them. Had a great game like we usually do, and uh, luckily we came out on top of this one. Well, playing them is always fun. They're always very competitive, and it's always a really good game. And uh, we just come out and compete, and glad we came out the one in the first game. So Mission Viejo pulls off the big dramatic win in the bottom of the seventh inning at Saddleback College. Capo, though, out hit Mission Viejo 5-4. to four. Patrick Sandoval, eight strikeouts in the win. He improves to 5-2. and two. Tyler Odekirk, 1-2 and an RBI for Mission Viejo 
in that victory. In game two, Mission Viejo gets the sweep. They beat Capo 4-1. to one. Tanner Bybee gets the win for Mission Viejo. Capo now 8-11. and 11. Tyler Odekirk again, 2-3. for three. Big game in game two. Both teams now back to league play. Mission Viejo looking to stay perfect in South Coast League play. They started the season 4-0. and And Capo Valley, a hot start in the Seaview League at 3-1. and When we come back, highlights from the number one team in softball in the country when the Mission Viejo Sports Zone rolls on. The greatest thrills and excitement are awaiting you right in your own backyard. The CIF Southern Section and your SoCal Ford dealers encourage you to go to a game at your local high school. Unbelievable action is right in your community. You'll be amazed at what you've been missing. Supporting your local school has never been more fun. Go to a game this week. Welcome back to the Mission Viejo Sports Zone. I'm Gordon Spencer. Well, the Trinity League is experimenting for the first time this season by playing three league games in one week against the same opponent instead of spreading it out over several weeks. Let's show you highlights of the number one team in Orange County. League opener for both modern day and number one Jay Sarah. They met just two days before this one. Jay Sarah beat them in the Boris Classic five to nothing. Top of the fourth, runner at third for Modern Day and two out, and Quentin Longry gets his ninth strikeout in four innings to keep it a 0-0 tie. Top fifth, it's the defense behind Longry. Jake Prees laying out and making a great catch out in right field. Bottom of the fifth, Lyle Lynn at second when Josh Steven lines it down the left field line. Here comes Lynn to score, and Jay Sarah takes a 1-0 lead on the RBI one-out triple by Steven. Jay Sarah adds another. Ben Kane lifts a deep fly to left center and Steven will tag and score to make it two to nothing Jay Sarah after five on the sacrifice fly RBI. Jay Sarah adds another run in the sixth then Jake Freeze closes it out. The grounder to third and Jay Sarah wins the league opener three to nothing. Yeah, I thought we kind of slept walked um, early. You know, I thought we had some pretty poor at bats. We had chances to score. Uh, Modern day had chances to score. I think Q, you know, when runners get on base, he kind of clutched up a little bit more, kind of humped up a little bit more and competed a little bit better. Um, you know, on both sides, I thought we, we competed very well on the mound, and then at the plate, we weren't very competitive. And then we picked it up. Lyle gets a. a um, you know, a, a big hit by pitch, sacrifice him over, and then you got the right guy coming up with Royce Lewis. So that kind of opened up. Uh, you know, I think we breathed a sigh of relief at that point. Uh, any league wins a big win, and especially against Modern Day, who you know we're going to have two more times after this week, um, is important. You know, I think it's going to be a little bit tougher. I think we learned a lot about coming back after a, a Friday game and then playing on Monday, where we had two days off. So. Um, you know, it was interesting. I mean, I mean, we had chances to score early, and I think that was just the two days off talking to us a little bit more. But league wins are big wins. Yeah, it was a rough first inning. I wasn't throwing very many strikes, but then I got, I figured it out and got some runs when I needed it, and we finished it out. Good bullpen. So Coach K said it. They played three times in one week. This was game one, and Jay Sarah gets the three to nothing victory in the league opener. Longry with 10 strikeouts in five and two thirds inning. In game two, Mater Day comes back at home to defeat Jay Sarah, the number one team in Orange County by a score of six to four. Blake Hunt, two for three with three RBIs. Colin Quinn gets the loss in that game for Jay Sarah. Game three in the week, Jay Sarah comes back and they win it eight to five, Ryan Pena a home run, it's a big home run, it's a grand slam. He knocks in four runs, and Jay Sarah now 2-1 and one in the Trinity League, and that uh, ties them with Santa Margarita after one week of league play. Opening week in girls softball, South Coast League, Elisa Niguel visiting the number one team in the country, the Mission Viejo Diablos at 18-0. 
Kira Snyder of Mission Viejo on the spectacular play coming all the way from first base to catch the bunt attempt. First inning, Mission Viejo attacks right away. Cameron Ibarra with the RBI single to right. Alyssa Palomino scores. It's 1-0 Mission Viejo. Meanwhile, Taylor McQuillan owns the circle, striking out the side in the second, mixing up her pitches. Aliso hitters off balance all day long. Bottom of the second. Mission Viejo adding some runs to the board, courtesy of Taylor McQuillan's double. That scores Allison Harvey. It's 2-0 Mission Viejo. McQuillan back at work and racking up the strikeouts. 225 strikeouts and 119 innings coming into the game. That's a called third strike. Then it's Mission Viejo senior Alyssa Palomino, the big blast. Now one home run away from tying the state record in career home runs. That was number 52. It's 3-0 Mission Viejo. Then in the fourth inning, Palomino launches one over the right field fence to tie the state record for 53rd career home run, a three-run blast, 6 to nothing. Mission Viejo, bottom of the sixth. It's Cameron Ibarra teeing off on a home run. This one goes to right field. It's seven to nothing, Mission Viejo. Meanwhile, back in the circle, Taylor McQuillan looking for another strikeout. Yep, she went, and Mission Viejo wins it 11 to nothing. The girls, uh, they understand they have a target on their back, and everybody comes out to play. And that's whether it's us or, or other teams, you know, they, they, they want their best out there on the dirt, and so do we. And they work hard in practice, and that's the one key thing that I see with these kids is that our practices are carrying over into the games. Uh, we work very hard on cutoff and relays, we work hard on communication, and we hit, and we hit, and we hit, and we try and make adjustments in practice, and it, and it has carried over in the game. Uh, but no, but starting off at 19 or no, we want to continue. We, we're 0-0. We're, oh, no. we're zero, zero. It's it's one inning at a time, one pitch at a time. And uh, we just hope to get the barrel on the ball and good things will happen. I think that the rankings to us, like we're grateful and very honored to be um, at that ranking, but to us it doesn't matter. We're going to come out and play like Mission Viejo High School plays every game. Um, whether we're first or last in the nation, we're going to come out and play. And um, that's the most important thing to us is staying as a team, staying united, and coming out strong and winning. So a perfect week for Mission Viejo to start league. They beat Danny Hills and then Elisa Miguel 11 to nothing. Palomino 2 for 2. And that state tying home run, her 53rd of her career. McQuillan now 19-0 in the circle. Palomino on the week, four for four, three home runs and five walks. Well, the Mission Viejo girls softball team looking for back-to-back -back CIF titles. They won their first in 2014 and looking very good to repeat here in 2015. Well, that's going to do it for the Mission Viejo Sports Zone. Don't forget missionviejolife.org for all of the episodes. I'm Gordon Spencer. Thanks for watching.